<clears throat> God bless you, Carla. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, each and every person tuning in tonight. Miss Katrina, God bless you. Miss Hatcher, God bless you. Miss Green, God bless you. Regina, God bless you. Shy, God bless you. Listen, share, like, and invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Miss King, God bless you. Miss Green, how is Hallelujah. How is the sound, Miss Green? Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, share, like, and invite. Get your Bibles, family, tonight. We're going to be coming out of the book of Genesis, the third and the fourth chapter. Share, like, and invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Come on, come on. God bless you, Miss Lou. Hallelujah. God is so worthy. To be praised. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Come on, share like an invite. Let's get them on tonight, family. We're going deep into the word tonight. How many people have run their plates? Hallelujah. Commerce, Texas. Amen. Augusta Thompson. Hallelujah. How many people have run their plates, their silverware? Hallelujah. For tonight. How many people ready to eat on tonight? Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We're going to dig into this word. And we're going to take it to another level tonight. Deeper depths. Higher heights. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Come on, share, like, and invite. Thank, I thank Sister King and Miss Lou for sharing the, the um, live. Come on, come on. Miss Green for sharing the live. Thank you. Come on. Come on. You got to share, like, and invite. We got to get some people on tonight. Hallelujah. We got to strengthen our brothers. Hallelujah. We got to strengthen our brothers. Come on. I have. I brought my plate. Come on. If you brought your plate tonight, your silverware. Christian Nicole, God bless you. The Lord, the Lord placed you in my spirit earlier. Hallelujah. Glory. God said he's doing a stirring in your spirit. Hallelujah. Christian Nicole, there's going to be in a hunger that come upon you. Hallelujah. For the word of God like never before. Go with the hunger. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Miss Bolton, God bless you. For sharing. Come on. Hallelujah. Share like an invite, family. Hallelujah. You ready to eat? <clears throat> Glory be to the Lamb of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No season needed. For the word is already seasoned for this season of your life. Miss Durham, God bless you. Come on. Share, like, and invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. We want to dig in the word on tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you, Uncle Richard. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. He's worthy to be prayed. We're going to dig in the word on tonight. We had a, a phenomenal time last night. We got deep in the word last night. Hallelujah. It was a blessing. Hallelujah. We thank uh, Christian Nicole for sharing. Hallelujah. We got deep into the word last night and it was such a blessing. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Miss Durham. Hallelujah. It was such a blessing because the Lord opened up the word. Hallelujah. On a whole nother level. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I mean, it was good. Anybody that was on the prayer line yesterday, hallelujah, you know that the, the prayer line, it, hey, it was an on-time word, hallelujah, one day I might, I might speak it so some of y'all could get it, hallelujah, but it was no cosigner needed, Miss Crenshaw, God bless you, Miss Roberts, God bless you, listen, share like an invite, we're going into prayer, and we're going into the word, get your Bibles, 
God bless you, Mr. Grady. Get your Bibles. We're coming out of the book of Genesis 3 and Genesis 4. Get your Bible. Hallelujah. Peace and blessings be unto each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Share like an invite. Welcome to Shines Live, the voice. Expect the unexpected. God can do everything but fail. We serve a magnificent God and all-knowing God. Let's dig in the word on tonight. Hallelujah. Make sure you have your plate, your silverware. We going in tonight. We going in tonight. Get your Bible, Genesis chapter 3 and 4. Hallelujah. We just going to get deeper and deeper into the word of God. Hallelujah. We going in prayer. Send the fire, family. Send the fire. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so worthy to be praised. And we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. You're great. Hallelujah. Alberta, God bless you. Shannon, God bless you. Betty, God bless you. Miss Clemens, God bless you. Share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Welcome to Shine's Live. The voice, God bless you, Ty. Hallelujah. Expect the unexpected. God can do everything but fail. Hallelujah. Y'all, those of you that are tuning in, make sure you share, like, and invite. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this on your timeline. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for tonight. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you for your love, your kind. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Father, we know that without you, we could do nothing. But through you, God, we could do all things. Father, we honor you tonight. For there's none like you in all the heavens or the earth. Father, we thank you for everything, Father, that you've done this far. Father, we ask you that you just give us fresh manna from heaven. Let me decrease in the natural, increase in the spirit. Father, saturate me with your wisdom. Saturate me with your knowledge. Use me as a vessel to speak to your people. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we ask that you cover the life under your blood. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Put a hedge of fire around the life right now, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you in advance. Father, we decree and declare a miracle tonight. Open the word up, Father, on a whole nother level tonight. And God, we give you glory. And God, we give you honor. And God, we give you praise. In your son Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen, amen. God bless you, Miss Sheila. God bless you, Kim. Danny Warren, God bless you, Ty. Ty, God bless you as well. Come on. Get your Bible, share like an invite. Hallelujah. Genesis. We're going to touch up a little verses in Genesis so you can be up to speed on where this thing going. Hallelujah. We don't want to leave you behind. Hallelujah. Genesis 3. We're going to step to Genesis 3. And we're going to cover a couple verses in Genesis 3. And we're pushing straight into Genesis 4. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. I want to tell somebody tonight what's hidden can still be seen. I want to tell somebody tonight, what's hidden can still be seen. You look at the picture above, you see a tree. But if you look very closely, if you don't pay attention, if you just stumble upon it and not paying attention, you it's something hidden. But if you pay attention, it still can be seen. Tonight, we want to go deep into the word. 
and understand what's hidden can still be seen. Hallelujah. You have people that, that, that are living contrary to the word of God, but they do it on the low. But it's what's hidden still can be seen. Because one thing about life, somebody always see you doing something. What you think somebody does not see. There's somebody watching and looking at you. Can anybody see that picture? And they notice that, that if you're not paying attention, that, that lion will get you. If you're not paying attention, you'll stumble into this tree because what hidden is, is really seen if you're paying attention. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And that's what's going on in today's society. A lot of people are, are doing stuff. they hiding it. But I want to encourage you tonight, even though you hide it, it still can be seen. You, you may never see an alcoholic drink or drink. But if they come in staggering, it's seen. Uh, if they come in with their words slurring, it's seen. You, you can see that they're drunk by looking in their eyes. What's hidden can still be seen. Who am I speaking to tonight? Somebody has some stuff hidden, but it still can be seen. Yes, yes. You can tell when somebody is on drugs. You can tell when somebody is, is truly uh, in a state of depression if you have the right eye. If you have a spirit of discernment, you, you can tell what other people cannot see, you can see it. Now this picture here is close up to you so you see the lion looking at you. But some of you, if I told you to back up a hundred yards, you wouldn't even know that is something right there beside the tree because what is hidden can still be seen. You, you wouldn't even realize that that lion was on the other side of the tree because he's blending in. Tonight we have so many people, they just blending in saints. Somebody need to write blending in saints. We, we ought to not be saints that are blending in. Uh, we ought to be saints that are standing out instead of blending in. I want to encourage somebody tonight, if you blending in with your community, if, if you look like your community, yo, you should not look like your community. You should not be a product of your community. Your community should be a product of you. Come on, your neighborhood should be a product of you. I need somebody to, to write that down to understand that, that tonight God want to deal on some levels tonight. People around you, you should not be going like the people around you. The people around you as a saint ought to be going like you. But the problem is we have so many blending in Christians. They, they, they try to hide they try to fit in when, when God ain't called you to fit in. God called you to stand out. You steady trying to force what don't fit. Somebody need to say, don't force what don't fit. Oftentimes we have saints that's blending in, try, trying to fit in when God called you to stand out. You should not be a product of your environment. Your vi environment should be a product of you. God bless you, Deborah. Your product should be an environment. Your environment should be a product of you. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that, that because of you being in that environment, you ought to begin to change the environment. I know that it was drugs on that street, but if you praying hard enough and you living right long enough, somebody going to see your life. Once you begin to change one, 
Reach one, teach one. Who am I speaking to? You, you ought to be a light shining in a dark place. What's hidden can still be seen. I need some people to focus on this picture in front of you. Because if you look at the lion, he's hiding behind the tree. He's trying to blend in. So what he's looking for won't see him. But if you notice, one of the eyes are sticking out. He'll see them, but they won't see him. The problem, if you say you are, the people ought to know you say. If you holy, people ought to know you holy. You ain't got no business blending in. God has not called you to blend in. Blending in is like fitting in. I would encourage somebody, don't force what don't fit. Some of you, you couldn't even go back to being who you used to be when you was in the world. The world will not accept you. Let me tell you why. Because soon as you go out, they say, when you say, I, I thought you were saved. What you doing over here at this party? What you doing drinking and, and, and doing everything contrary to the word of God? What you doing in the lottery line? I thought that you were saved. One thing I want to encourage you tonight is that what's hidden can still be seen. Now, I need y'all to understand. Now, watch this now. The Bible said they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Now, now watch where they hide themselves. The Bible says in three, Genesis 3 and 8, amongst the trees, look, look at that lion right there in front of you, that, 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 that right there looked just like Adam and his wife hiding amongst the trees. I want to encourage somebody tonight, what's hidden is still being seen. Uh, if you unfaithful, it's going to show. If you're not treating your husband right, if you're not treating your wife right, it's going to show. If you're not treating your neighbor right, it's going to show. Because what's hidden can still be seen. We paint perfect pictures in our life, but the truth be told, it's just a picture painted perfect. The picture is not perfect. Is just painted that way. I would encourage you, you, you can dress up and you can look swell and well, but, but what's hidden can still be seen. We, we notice that Adam and Eve, they hid themselves in the trees. Just like this lion is hiding. They hide it because they hear the voice of God walking through the garden at the cool of the day. They, they hear the voice of God. Watch this. The Bible says that they hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. That means that they hid themselves behind sin. They hid themselves because they knew that they had done something wrong. Yeah, 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 they, they hid their self because they figured that he wouldn't see them because what's hidden can still be seen. Watch this. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where, where, where are you? Uh, where are you, Adam? I, I'm walking through the garden. You usually run up and meet me, but where you at now? Uh, something has taken place that caused you to be absent from my presence. Who am I speaking to? Something has caused you. You have committed a sin that caused you to be absent from my presence. Write that down. Sin will make you absent from the presence of God. Sin will make you absent from the presence of God.
Come on. Sin will make you absent from the presence of God. The Bible said God's eyes cannot look upon sin. God said, Adam, where, where you at? Usually when I come in this place, I, I see you. Oh, I know you now. I don't see you. Something is wrong because I usually see you. You would usually beat me. But now you're not meeting me because you're hiding amongst the trees. Why are you hiding amongst the trees? Why are you hiding amongst the trees? God bless you, Casey. Why are you hiding amongst the trees? Because sin will make you absent from the presence of God. I'm speaking to somebody already. Sin will make you absent from the presence of God. The Lord said, Adam, where you at? Verse 10, watch it. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hide myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Have thou eaten of the tree, wherefore I commanded thee that thou shall not eat. He said, wait a minute, Adam, you, you ain't never had this problem. Something has caused you to be absent from my presence. Sin will make you get out of the presence of God. Sin, sin is not winning. Sinning is not winning. I'm speaking to somebody. Sinning ain't winning. I know, I know we, we're not trying to be political correct. We're, we're not trying to, you know, dot all our I's and cross our T's with, with the way we saying it. But sin, sinning ain't winning. I know we, we want to speak it. And, and we want to know why sinning is not winning. Sinning ain't winning. Because the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. You got to understand sinning is not winning. Sinning ain't winning. He said, Adam, where you at? Adam, where are you located? I left you in the garden and we could have conversation and we could see one another. But now you didn't hear yourself amongst the trees. Who told you that you were naked? And the man said, the woman whom I gave to me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And now I have committed sin, but I hid from your presence because I was in shame of my sin. Who am I speaking to? You don't go to church because you're shame of the sin that you committed. But what I like about it, God is still talking to Adam to get him to come back to him. Adam, where you at? Where you at, Adam? You're absent from my presence. Adam, where you at? I, I created you in my image, in my likeness. Where you at? You're supposed to be here on Sunday. You're supposed to be at Bible study. Where Where are you? Sinning ain't, ain't winning. Adam said, Lord, it, it's, that, it's that woman that you gave me. Uh -huh. She gave it to me and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou have done? And the woman said, It ain't me, God. It was the serpent that gave it to me. It was him that, that beguiled me. It was him that fooled me. So I'm hiding because my husband hiding. I'm hiding because I know I done committed sin. One thing, sin always feels good, but it don't end good. Somebody write that down. Sin may feel good, but it won't end good. Sin 
Sin may feel good, but it won't end good. What are you saying, prophet? The Bible said that the way to sin is death. Anything that, that's too good to be true is too good to be true. We're going to skip over to verse number 20 and 23. 22, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Now, I need y'all to listen to this good. Make sure you're reading along. Genesis 3 and 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hands and take also Notice that word also. Take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. What are you saying? The Lord said, I had a tree called the tree of life in the midst of the God. But I also had a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he was not supposed to touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But if he have touched it, if he turn around and eat off the tree of life, the Bible clearly says here in verse 22 that by him going and eating off the tree of knowledge of good and evil and turn around and eat off the tree of life, that he will live forever. See, see, the enemy did not tell him everything. No, that old serpent didn't tell them to go and eat out the tree of life so you can live forever. Because it was a setup from the beginning. The Lord God said, listen, behold, the man has become as one of us. Jesus, he came, he become one of us. The Holy Spirit, he done became one of us. The man has become one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hands and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. This is why man and woman was kicked out of the garden because they ate out the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But if they would have went and ate out the tree of life, they would have been knowing good and evil and living forever. Verse 23, watch this. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to tip the ground from whence he was taken. Now I want you to understand, remember, God placed Adam in the garden. So God kicked him out of the very garden that he placed in me. Because if Adam would have went and ate off the tree of life, the Bible says in 22 that he would be as one of us, knowing good and evil and living forever. Now let's dive into the word Genesis 4. Verse number one through 10. Now we understand, now we understand how Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden. They tried to hide themselves among the tree because they have committed sin. Like the tree was going to hide them. The tree cannot hide you. Verse number 1 through 10. Genesis 4, 1. And Adam knew. Now listen to this good. Adam knew Eve. That means he knew her. He knew her. And she conceived. The only way a woman conceived is you got to get to. You got to get to knowing her. In a more intimate way. In a more husband wife type way. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bad came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tittle of the ground. We have two different people in two different occupations. I want to encourage somebody tonight. What's hidden can still be seen. And in the process of time. It came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. 
an offering, not his best offering, an offering unto the Lord. Now Cain, as we know, was a tittle of the ground. But Abel was the keeper of the flock, of the sheep. But in the process of time, as both of them have gotten their harvest, Cain brought forth of the fruit of the ground just a plain offering unto the Lord. Three. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth of the fruit of the ground an offering, catch that word, an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he, he also brought of the firstlings of the flock and of the fattest thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Why did God have respect unto Abel in his offering? Why? Because Abel gave more. Abel went the extra mile. Abel did not only give his first, but he gave his fattest. But if we look in verse 3, it said Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. Just anything, any old offering. Somebody need to write down, God won't accept anything. Somebody need to write that down. God will not accept anything, any offering. We, we think that we can give God anything. But here Cain has gave God anything. But Abel give God, not only does he give God his first, but he give God the fattest of the first. But, but old Cain said, I, I just give him something just to say I gave him something. God won't accept anything. God will not just accept any kind of offering. God will not accept it just to say he got something from you. Now watch this. And the Bible says the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now I need y'all to understand before we even go, go further, I need you to understand right here. Was hidden can still be seen. Cain, God already realized that you did not give him your very best. And I know some of you, it may not be money, but you ought to give God your best praise. Somebody tonight need to write that down. Give God your best. Give God your best and nothing less. Give God, we thank Pam, Ivy for sharing. Give God your best and nothing less. We think that we can just go to church and that's it. We in attendance. News flash. God wants more than weekend visits. God wants full custody. God want to be able to visit you on Monday. If he want to see you Wednesday, he can see you Wednesday. God want to see you every day. He ought to be able to hear from you. The Bible said that, that Cain just gave anything, but, but Abel gave his best. Was hidden. Can still be seen, Cain. Even though God wasn't sitting there looking over your shoulder when you brunk it. We serve an omnipotent God, a God that knows everything. If you're not going to give your best to God, giving him anything is like giving him nothing. Who am I speaking to? When, when you go to give your offering unto God, don't borrow the money up. And throw it in the basket. Don't complain about giving God your best. He woke you up this morning. 
Let's go deeper. Watch this, family. The Bible said that God had respect of Abel and to his offering. Why? Because Abel not only gave him his first, he gave him the, the biggest of his first. Verse number five, but Cain, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Or well, somebody need to hear this tonight. If thou does well, shall not thou be accepted? Don't do what you see everybody else doing. Well, I go to church, but I won't live this life. The devil is a lie. Don't do what you see everybody else doing. Just because you see them doing it does not mean that God have called them to do it. Just because you see them doing it don't mean that they're doing it right. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15 to study. To show yourself approval. Uh, I spoke last night and, and I told the people that the children of God, the men and women of God, I told them that the devil, the enemy, he studies you more than you study yourself. And if you can study yourself more, you can prepare yourself for what's to come. That's deep right there. We'll dig into that at another time. But the Bible says that if thou does well, shall thou not be accepted. God, God said, if you give me well, I ought to accept it. I gave my only begotten son for you. But you want to offer me anything, any kind of praise, any kind of prayer, any kind of time spent. God said, I need somebody I'm speaking to tonight. God said, I need your best. God said, I need your best. And the Bible say in Genesis 4 and 7, and if thou does not well, I need some of y'all to catch this. He said, if thou does not lie, if thou does not well, Cain, remember, he's talking to Cain. He said, listen, if Abel done good, then good shall be accepted. But he said, Cain, if thou does not well, watch what, watch this. Sin lie at the door. Why is sin lie at the door? Because I didn't done well. Because I have not done well. Number one, because the enemy has convinced you to shout in God. The enemy has convinced you to take away from God. How dare we take away from God when God is our everything? God is our all in all. How dare we take away from God? How dare we offer God any kind of praise? I'm talking about God that woke you up this morning. I'm talking about that kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. I'm talking about that put food on your table. Is there anybody here tonight that understand that I got to give God my best praise? I got to give God my best offering because God ain't taking anything. And some of you going into 2019, I'm letting you know God ain't taking anything. God can replace you, but you can't replace God. Who am I speaking to? Who am I speaking to tonight? Cain. If that does not well, Cain, sin lie at the door. Now listen, while sin lie at the door, that means you're going to have to exit out of that door sooner or later. That means soon as you walk out, you walk into it. Why is sin lie at the door? Because will a man rob God? Yeah, he will. And his tithes and his offering. What is his offering? What are you offering to God? Well, I'm going to tell God, thank you, but, I, but I'm not going to stand up. I'm not going to reverence God. I'm not going to bow on my knees. 
I'm going to offer God any kind of praise. I'm going to offer God any kind of prayer. I'm going to talk to God any kind of way. I ain't going to have respect for God. He said, if thou does not well, sin lie at the door. Watch this. And unto thee shall it shall be his desire. Because we do not do right by God, then sin waits, awaits for you at the door. And you become sin's desire. Sin is waiting at the door for you. And you become sin's desire. And they shall rule over you. Sin shall have her dominion over you. Why? Because we offering God anything. Let's let just be real. We, we offering God anything. Some people, well, I don't have the money to pay my tithes. How come you don't have it when he said take it off of the top? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, prop. You don't understand. I got bills to pay. But the Bible said, prove to me that you trust me in Malachi. And see, won't I open up the windows of heaven and I'll pull you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Why? Because when you offer God your best, giving God your best, make heaven respond to your request. Somebody write that down. Giving God your best makes heaven respond to your request. Giving God your best make heaven respond to your request. I want to tell somebody tonight what's hidden can still be seen. See that you're doing behind closed doors. I'm going to prove to you tonight that this stuff still can be seen. The Bible says. We're in, we're in Genesis chapter 4 verse number 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. They had a conversation. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Cain rose up against Abel and killed him because God respected Abel more than he respected Cain. What's hidden can still be seen. Cain has has brought his brother. He didn't had a, a heart to heart conversation with his brother, and now he has led his brother out into the field and the Bible said that he rose up against his brother and he slew him. All because Abel gave God his best. God deserves your best and nothing less. Whatever you offer to God, whether it's a prayer, whether it's a praise, whether it's your tithe, whether it's your offering, whatever you offer up to God, whether it's your time, whether it's a fast, whatever you offer up to God, God deserves the very best and nothing less. The Bible said Cain took his brother out into the field, was having a conversation. He was already jealous. Cain was already jealous because God respected his brother Abel and his brother's offering. And Cain could have just left his at the house. Because what is hidden can still be seen. Cain, even though you brought this, that wasn't even your best. You, you, you gave me anything. And you expect me to respect everything that you done done. Not so. The Bible said that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Abel was only 
doing what was required of him by God. It was required of Cain. But now here is the first murder taking place in the Bible. And this murder take place in between brothers. And then you then you wonder why you have brothers killing brothers. The first murder takes place and it's all behind jealousy. People will be so jealous of you that they'll murder you. If they can't murder you physically, they'll try to kill your character, kill your name, bring shame to you. Who am I speaking to tonight? Now I need you to catch this. The Lord said unto Cain, Cain, I see you, but where is Abel, thy brother? Because Cain, when I used to see you, I used to see your brother. And Cain said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Cain said, why are you asking me? I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Knowing, he telling a lie. He said, am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. And he said, what have thy done? The voice of thy brother blood crieth unto me from the ground. Cain, I want to ask you what you done done. You sitting up here flying off at the mouth because you know that you're wrong. Cain, what have you, you done? Cause, Cause, even though you felt like nobody saw you kill your brother, was hidden can still be seen. The Bible said that he said, "Thy brother's voice, the voice of thy brother, blood cry unto me from the ground." I need y'all to understand. He said, "Your brother blood." You did something in secret. Now your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. What is it have you done? Oh, okay, oh, 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 Cain, you, you, you wanted to figure that by, by saying you're not your brother's keeper, that that would be it, that nobody would have seen what you done. We're going to come around the mountain to some of you in a minute. Just be patient. I'm fit to help some of you in a one minute. The voice of thy brother cried unto me from the ground. Now, now notice that he done killed this brother. He slew his brother. He has dug a hole and buried his brother and covered it up and act like what's hidden can't be seen. But I want to encourage somebody tonight to let you know God sees everything. Cain, where's your brother Abel? Oh, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he at. He ain't in my back pocket. I, I don't keep up with him. Wait a minute, Cain. Wait a minute. I'm asking you because I hear your brother's blood crying to me from the ground. Cain, little do you know, I see everything. Cain, even though you wash your hands, even though you buried him, you covered him up real good. And you figure the average person won't see what you have done. The Lord comes to Cain and says, where is Abel? He said, am I my brother's keeper? He said, I don't know. He said, wait a minute, Cain, before you say anything else. Your brother blood crying to me from the ground. Because that's where you left your brother. In the ground. And just because you hid him there and nobody seen you do it. Does not mean that what's hidden is not seen. 
God said, I saw everything. This is how you know God saw everything. Verse 11. And now art thy cursed from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. No, no, Cain did not have blood on his hand, but what's hidden can still be seen. What are you saying? I'm saying some of you tonight, God wanted me to encourage some people tonight, what's hidden can still be seen. Uh -huh. God said, I see you on my side, but then I still see you in the club. What's hidden can still be seen. You, you can't walk with God and run with the devil. You have to have a well made up mind. You want to you want to slow dance with God. But then behind you, you want the devil behind you. And God ain't dealing with that. Some of you tonight. God sees. What's hidden. God reveals to people. What you don't want. Reveal. Why? Because as long as you hide sin, sin has dominion over your life. Sin will get you out the presence of God. Cain has brought a curse upon himself because he keeps committing. He doesn't murder his brother. But not only that, he first, he, he, he gave God anything. And then he got mad. That's the second thing happened. And he got mad and angry and jealous. Then he kills his brother. If that wasn't enough, now he gets smart with God. And say, am I my brother's keeper? God said, Cain, I see everything. I want to encourage somebody tonight. You, you, you can't lay around and play around. Because what's hidden can still be seen. Laying around and playing around will get you in the ground. You, you, you've been tipping and dipping for a time now. And nobody has seen you but when you pop up pregnant. When, when, when they got you on Facebook recording you in sin. Do you understand the devil is out to sabotage your name? God want me to encourage somebody tonight. What's hidden can still be seen. Somebody tonight need to say, I can't hide no more. What's hidden is still being seen. If man don't see you, God sees you. Why? Because one thing about God, he never slumbers, nor does he sleep. And you want to go and flow in God, but God said it's some stuff that's hidden that I'm still seeing you do. You, you, you can't hide no more. When, when you want to grow in God, you got to understand what's hidden can still be seen. Yeah, you might not curse in the church, but if you're cursing at the house, it still can be seen. It still can be seen. Oftentimes, we hide from man what's being seen by God. Somebody write that down. Stop hiding from man what's being seen by God. Stop hiding from man what's being seen. By God.
Because oftentimes we'll respect people, but we won't respect God. Man has no heaven or hell to put you in, but if you want to flow in God, you got to be willing to understand that, that sin will make you absent from the presence of God. Sin will take you right out of the presence of God. The Bible said that God's eyes cannot look upon sin. That's why you have to be covered under the blood. Because when God see you, he see the blood of Jesus over you. What's hidden can, can still be seen. If you have jealousy, envy, and hate, and everything in your heart, it's hidden behind your clothes and behind that smile. But God said, I see everything. I want to encourage somebody tonight that you have to have a well-made-up mind. Is there anybody tonight that has a well-made-up mind? I'm not trying to hide no more. Oftentimes, every time you try to hide, you get caught. What's hidden can still be seen. God ain't looking for people that want to stay in sin. It's a difference from committing sin and living in sin. Let that marinate like neck bone juice. It's a difference in committing sin and living in sin. Anytime a person has committed sin, they ask God for forgiveness. Even in the Bible, Jesus told them, listen, go and sin no more. The very thing that he just forgave you for, he said, hey, listen, don't go do that again. But we still end up going to do it anyway. Because why? Because sin feel good, but it won't end good. God is not accepting any kind of offering. When you offer something to God, listen at the word offering. When you offer something to God, you got to put a ring on it. What is a ring? A ring represents a commitment. God, I need you to do this for me. But Lord, if you do this, I'll do this. And I'm committed and I'm vowing and I'm sticking to my word. What's hidden can still be seen. Who am I speaking to tonight? You, you, you're trying to hide behind you. You see the preacher at the stove. But you got your cigarettes in your hand or, or you got your alcohol in your hand or your lottery ticket. And as soon as you see them, you try to turn to the side. What's hidden can still be seen. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. Maybe it's a preacher on here tonight. And you're not what you used to be at in God. But everybody still can congratulate you on a job well done. But deep down inside, you know you ain't where you're supposed to be. God said what's well, hidden can still be seen. Maybe you're not treating your spouse right. And, and, and you smile in public, but you're hurting in private. Was hidden can still. It can still be seen. Time reveals all things. 
It's just a matter of time that what you're hiding will be revealed. Tonight, I need everybody to put no more hiding. Tonight, I need everybody to put no more hiding. It's time out for us hiding from man. What's being seen by God anyway. Now, we look in the book, we see. Right here we see, in, in, in the Bible we see right here where Adam and Eve hid from God. But God still seen them. We, we still see right here, Cain hid Abel under the dirt. But God still seen it, Cain. Because the blood is upon your hand. No more hiding. The Bible said that men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. I can't cover for nobody but myself. I'm speaking to somebody right now you you can't cover for nobody but yourself if you do it right you'll get it right if you get it right that's because you've done it right i want to encourage somebody tonight listen quit trying to impress man and try to impress god you want to impress somebody, impress God. By you impressing God, you, you letting God know, God, I need your attention. It's no more hiding. What's hiding, what's being hid in plain sight is still being visible to man. Sooner or later, the cover will come off. I want to encourage some of you because the enemy will set you up and then pull the cover off of you. The enemy will destroy your name because you're playing his game. The enemy will destroy your name because you planned his game. Come on now. Who am I speaking to tonight? The enemy wants you to miss heaven. But tonight I need you to let the word take root and ground it in your life and understand no need of me hiding from man what God see in a way. If you got to hide sin, you not ought to not be in sin. When you hide, you're hiding because you know you did something wrong. You don't believe me? That's Adam and Eve. They hid behind the tree. Because they knew they had committed a sin. It's time to stop playing church. It's time to be the church. The Lord is looking for willing vessels. That's willing to deny their flesh. That's willing to walk away from the very thing that's calling them. To walk away from man is to walk unto God. Cain, what do you did with Abel? Oh man, I thought I hid Abel. But apparently I didn't hide him good enough because what you hid, God still saw. It's my well be as you left Cain. Cain, you might as well have left Abel on the top of the ground. 
But the thing the enemy tell you is you can get away with it. The enemy love telling you that you can get away with it, but the truth of the matter is you never get away. You you never get away with it. The enemy just want to set you up. I'm speaking to somebody tonight that I got to let you know what's hidden can still be seen. It does not matter if you do it at 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. What's hidden can still be seen. God is watching everything. And as God is watching you, you got to understand that God is viewing what you're doing. Notice Cain hides his brother in the dirt. But God said your blood still call. Your brother's blood still is calling and crying out to me. Adam, why are y'all hiding when I can see everything? I want to encourage somebody tonight that we serve an omnipotent God and all-knowing God, not just all-knowing, all-seeing. God sees everything. Tonight, I want to encourage you. Sin will get you out of the presence of God. Sin will make you so shame that you'll go and hide. But the enemy didn't tell you that, did he? No, Cain, he didn't tell you that when you killed Abel and that if you after you buried him, you still were going to get in trouble for it. Cain, you done buried Abel. You buried the sin that you committed, but it was still attached to you. Oh, Adam and Eve, if y'all go in high, I promise you that the Lord won't find you. He won't know that y'all done ate off a tree. But the Bible tells us that he told them. And because of what they did, he kicked them out of the garden. The place where God placed them. The enemy caused them to lose their place in God. It was a divine setup. The enemy study you more than you study you. The enemy know your weakness. And he's trying to use it against you. Can't. The enemy know that you love to get way to go. Cain, the enemy know that you want to be the top brother. Cain, the enemy know that you still got a little jealousy in you. Now that you're mad, Cain, the enemy knows that you committing this sin is keeping you out of the will of God. Adam and Eve, the enemy knows that the wages of sin is death. The enemy knows that the gift of God is eternal life, but he keeps trying to convince you to live outside the will of God. Because being outside the will, you in the way. Out of the will, in the way. Once you become out of the will of God, you become in the way of God. Tonight I want to encourage you what can what is hidden can still be seen. No more hiding. Lord, make my life an open book ought to be your request. Your life should be as transparent as a glass. Your life should be as transparent as a glass. What are you saying, prophet? I'm saying you should be willing to let people see in and see out. But oftentimes we cover up. We know we ain't doing right at the house, but we cover it up. We take a whole bunch of pictures to make people think that everything is all right. Wake up, saints. Don't allow the enemy 
to get you back in the club. Don't allow the enemy to make you lose your home. Because you're not doing right. Wake up, saints. Don't allow the enemy to make you get out of the presence of God. There's 66 books in this Bible. But your life is a book. That's being written every day. There ought to be a turning point in this story. I need somebody to put. It's a turning point. In my book. The book of life that you're writing by your every move. There ought to be a turning point in it that I went from living wrong to living right. Is anybody tonight have a turning point? That it's a point where this story turns and, and I was living in any kind of way, but this thing done turned. Because I can't continue to live like I used to. Anytime God has a call upon your life, you can't do what everybody else do. You're supposed to draw them. They are not supposed to draw you. But if you out there doing what they doing, how are you representing Christ living a double standard life? You can't be in the club and be effective in the church. Yes, you can come to church. Everybody can come to church. But to be effective in the church, you got to let go of one and grab hold of the other. Tonight we looking for this to be a turning point for somebody. That said, you know what? I'm going to do right by my husband. Because even though people can't see it, God still sees it. I'm going to do right by my wife. Because even though people can't see it, God still sees it. I'm going to do right by God. Because even though people don't see it, God sees it. The most toughest times of your life, the trying times, notice the enemy only come to set you up when you're already in a place of being hurt. Who am I speaking to tonight? Notice that Cain is hurt because God don't respect his offering. The enemy sets him up to kill his brother only to put a curse upon his life. The enemy ain't passing out no blessings. The enemy trying to make the curse look like blessings. Cain, if you get rid of Abel, then, then guess what? He won't be the better brother. Cain, Cain we know that God loved Abel more. Why don't you just do away with it? If you don't see what the enemy is doing to you. I want to encourage somebody and I need every person on here to write this down. Don't do the devil's dirty work for it. Don't do the devil's dirty work for him. What are you saying, prophet? The enemy telling you. To do something at the will of God to somebody. To talk about them. To mistreat them. To use them. To walk over them. To use them like a doormat. To use them like a doorknob. The enemy is telling you to treat them any kind of way. But in spite of how somebody has been to you. He said, love and kindness have I drawn thee. You can still show love. But you don't have to do nothing extra. Do not do the devil's dirty work for him. We're getting, we getting ready to close. But when you do the devil's dirty work. I want you to understand when you do his dirty work for him, 
You do the time. Because you committed the crime. Tonight we need to be more about our father's business. You, 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 you got to understand even on and off of Facebook. In real life, God is still watching you. And the enemy is trying to catch you of God. To get you to do his dirty work. Talk about him. Treat him any kind of way. Try to get him out the will of God. The enemy wants you to do his dirty work. But if you want your hands dirty, devil, do your own dirty work. Because what's hidden can still be seen. And in closing, I say this. The enemy will never tell you the result of you doing what you're doing. What are you saying, prophet? When the enemy gets you to do his dirty work, the enemy never tells you, Cain, if you kill Abel, you're going to be cursed. Adam and Eve, if y'all eat off the tree, you're going to be kicked out of the garden. He never tells them the end result. He never tells them if you commit this and die in this, that the wages of sin is death. He never tells you that, that, that if you treat them wrong sooner or later, they'll leave. They'll leave. He never tells you that. Because he know if he tell you that, you won't do that. Don't be fooled by the illusion that the devil paints to make you think that what's being hidden is not being seen. Tonight, tonight, I want to know tonight, did anybody learn anything out of this tonight? What's hidden can still be seen. Did you eat tonight? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the people that ate tonight. If you ate good tonight, let us know you ate good tonight. What is hidden can still be seen. I, I, I can't accompany. I can't accompany the devil. He writes as the king. He didn't want some. He didn't want a little friend down there with him. But I can't accompany him. I, I can't be his date to the dance. To his last dance. I, I can't. If you ate good tonight, let us know you ate good tonight. Tonight we getting ready to pray. And when we pray tonight, we're going to be praying. That God deliver you. From any hidden agenda. That the enemy is trying. To divine a line in your life. That God deliver you from hiding stuff from people. That God deliver, that God shows you what how he feels. That God becomes more realer to you than your very hand in front of you. You got to understand the Bible said that he's coming with the books in his hand. I want to run some stuff back across you while people are posting. Stop hiding from man was being seen by God. Give your God, giving God your best, make heaven respond on your request. Give God your best or nothing less. Sin may feel good, but it won't end good. Sinning ain't winning. Sin will make you absent from the presence of God. The enemy will destroy your name for playing his game. Tonight I want to encourage somebody to share this video, each of you, with somebody that you know. That, that they may be hiding some. Let this video speak to them.
saints, our life ought to be an open book. Send the fire family, we getting ready to pray. Hallelujah. Send the fire family, we getting ready to pray. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Jesus. There's some people on here tonight. 2018 was a bit rough for you. But God said, if you tighten it up, if you change from playing both sides of the fence, God said, he'll blow your mind in 2019. God said, he'll do it. The ball's in your court. No need of hiding anything. Let's get rid of everything that's contrary to the will of God. I want to encourage somebody tonight. God is a keeper. God can keep you out of fornication. God can keep you out of adultery. God can keep you out of homosexuality. God can keep you out of sin. Sin and ain't winning. We getting ready to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, let this word fall on good ground. Father, allow somebody to come and water it that you get the increase. Father, let this word take root and ground in their life. That after today, their life will no longer be the same. Father, we realize that what's hidden can still be seen. So, Father, tonight we're asking you to forgive us for every hidden sin, for every hidden agenda, for everything hidden that was not like you. Forgive us. Help us to be true men and women of God. Help us to stand even when we don't understand. Help us to be who you have called us to be. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, give them strength. Give them strength, God, and a desire to please you like never before. Father, show up in their home. Show up in their job. Even in dreams. My God, thank you, Jesus. I hear the spirit of the living God say he's going to reveal yourself to you in a dream. And you'll see yourself doing things and you will have an out of body experience. You'll be seeing yourself doing things that God wants you to fix in your life. Y'all remember this. Fresh manna here. Facts from heaven. The Holy Spirit just downloaded it in me. The Lord said he will visit you in a dream and he will show you yourself and you will have an out-of-body experience. What does that mean? That means you will see yourself. You will be outside of your body seeing what your body doing. The Lord said when you see these, these are the areas that I need you to work on in your life. God said, I'm getting ready to reveal to you what you look like to me. God said, I'm getting ready to show you from my perspective what it looked like. God said, I know that you dress well and you make people think it's all together. But God said, I'm getting ready to reveal to you yourself. And that is the word of the Lord. And Father, we thank you for the word. And we thank you for the revealing. 
Now give us strength that what you reveal, help us to overcome it and do right by you. Father, we know that through you we can do all things. But without you we can do nothing. Father, we decree and declare it done. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Come on, amen, amen. Listen, family, show some love tonight. I want to encourage somebody tonight to understand that when God reveals you to you, testify about it. But the area that God shows you, straighten that up. Because you're getting ready to walk into 2019. And the Spirit of the Lord said he's going to reveal to you before 2019. Some people here tonight, God is going to reveal yourself to, to you before 2019. Prepare yourself to see yourself. And the areas that God showed you, begin to work on them. And make sure you come back and testify. Or maybe you can tag me or put it on my wall. God showed me myself. God showed me myself. Remember this date, family. 12, 18, 18. God is getting ready to show you, you. And some of you, you're going to shake your head at your own self, but that is how you truly are. It's time out for playing church. It's time for us to be the church. Show some love, family. We're getting ready to go. Listen, I thank God just for each and every one of you tuning in. The next live will be Shine's Live. Expect the unexpected. And it'll be on uh, Saturday or Sunday. It just all depends. It'll be on Saturday or Sunday. Shine's Live, The Voice. It'll be on Saturday or Sunday. But by Saturday, I'll put it on. Hallelujah. We said confirmation. Y'all see that under confirmation prophet, I seen myself in a dream. Have anybody else God has showed them their self in a dream? Those of you that have it, God is getting ready to reveal to you, you. Hallelujah. This is confirmation, family. This is confirmation. Prepare yourself. The area that God shows you, there's another one. Those of you that have not received this, prepare yourself to receive this. And when you receive this, fix the problem that you see. Because that will be the thing that's hindering you from the flow of God like you desire. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is so worthy. Do your part. Just do your part. If you do your part, God will do his part. Hallelujah. So listen, I'll be back on the weekend. It'll be posted Saturday at what day and what time I'm coming on. Remember, you're always welcome to join me on the prayer line. Check my wall, my face, my wall on Facebook. Above my profile pictures, you'll see the flyers. You'll see what we're doing, when we're doing it. Hallelujah. Listen, stay in touch.
Stay prayerful. Stay mindful of what God is showing you. God is not showing you this for nothing. God said, I reveal to redeem. So prepare yourself for the revealing. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. Listen, we praying with you and we're praying for you. God bless you. We love you. Shalom.